In lesson 12, we're going to look at describing relationships between pyramids and prisms. So go ahead and on page 290, draw all the surfaces, okay, that would make up each shape. So each of those kind of sides of each of these solids. So you could have done this in a couple of ways. You could have just drawn them. Um, just the kind of two-dimensional shapes. So you could have just kind of drawn the base as a square here, and then you could have drawn four triangles. Um, you could have connected them. So let me show you. These are a couple of drawings that are called nets. So looking at the base shape and kind of putting that in the middle. So here's your base shape. And then those sides, if we just kind of fold them down, would all be equal triangles. This one, um, taking a look, we've got a triangle kind of at the top, a triangle at the bottom, and then three rectangles in the middle. So the net for the one that's shown here is an equilateral triangle, um, but we could have drawn it more like the one in your picture. So if we did that, let me just get rid of this one so we can draw over it. So for this one, you kind of have a big rectangle for one of the faces, and then maybe you have a couple of smaller rectangles, but they're not all equal in size because the triangle has different um, side measures. So maybe you had something like that, and then you have, you know, your triangle, your right triangle drawn there. So the base looked like it was a right triangle. So maybe something more like that. And really the way I drew it with um, the longest rectangle over here, that should probably fold up, that should fold up with the hypotenuse. So this would fold up along the hypotenuse. Um, but faces nonetheless, if you drew some rectangles with some triangles, that's what we're looking for. And then the cone a little bit harder. Um, you've got the circular shape, and then it kind of turn, it kind of curves here. If you've ever had a snow cone wrapper that you've unwrapped, maybe you've seen that before. So, what are the names of these um, solids? So, this first one that we had here was a square pyramid, since the base shape was a square, and it went up to a point. So square pyramid for this one. Um, this one had the two triangular bases. So two bases that are both triangles. Our triangular is a triangular prism since it stays uniform in shape top to bottom. And then a cone. So circular base that goes up to a point. Cone. Whoops. Um, all right. So then what is the same and different about the surfaces? So kind of these first two were made up of triangles and rectangles. But the pyramid just had the one square base. So the name, like the base shape or the name in it was only there once versus the prism, the triangle was there twice. So the, in the prism, the triangle was there twice. In the square pyramid, the square was there once. Sides were triangles. Here, um, the kind of sides around the middle were rectangles. And then the cone has a circular base. So what's the only surface that's not a polygon? That would be the circle. Okay, so the, this, the cone has non-circular non -circular faces. So both of these are not polygons because they have curves. So polygons can't have curves. All right. Um, then if you're in class, you're getting a card sort. Okay. So these are the cards. So if you're just doing this on the video, um, take a look at these cards. Use the, these as your cards to sort them. So you could just write down the letters of how you're going to sort them. So go ahead and look at these eight cards and sort them into two categories. Okay. Whatever two different categories you want, and then just be ready to explain um, the categories that you chose. So you could have decided that you wanted to do um, kind of some right solids versus oblique. So maybe you took all of these right solids and you put them together. 
It's all these ones that are standing straight up. And then any of these um, <clears throat> that were not standing straight up are called oblique. So right solids versus oblique could have been one category that you came up with. Maybe you could have done circular cross sections. Okay, so ones that had circles for the cross sections versus ones that didn't, in which case it would have been something like this. Maybe you did um, solids that have an apex or go to a point. So the pyramid and cone idea versus the prism cylinder idea. Um, certainly could have had other categories, but those are some um, of the main ones. Um, and then in this next activity that we did in class, we built um, some pyramids. So if you're watching this at home, you won't be able to do that. But when you get to class, make sure you, ch you check out um, the solids that were made. So this is kind of what was made, this green, orange, and blue one. And together they were put together and create a rectangular prism. So if they were put together as the puzzle correctly, they made um, a rectangular base and then a prism. And so the conjecture that most people came up with, so we've got kind of this rectangular prism and then we made three pyramids. So maybe um, for the volume, Maybe the volume um, conjectures, the volume is less than that of the rectangular prism. Or maybe the volume of the pyramid. Okay, so the volume of each pyramid is equal to the volume of the rectangular prism divided by three. Because we got it kind of in three equal parts. Some people thought maybe these three pyramids were the same size. Um, and so what would we need in order to verify that this conjecture is true, that it's the volume divided by three? So we would need to know that the three pyramids um, are equal in volume, so have the same volume. And how could we do that? So there's a couple different ways you could do that. So you could just prove that they have the same base area and height or the same cross-section area. So the base and cross-section areas. Um, so same base, same height for each of them or if you actually measured and calculated. So you would need, um, again, the base area. So you'd need the correct information to get the base area. So we see that we do have a square here Okay, or a rectangle, a rectangle base here and a rectangle base here. So if you had the length and width of each of those, um, maybe you could look into that and then the height. But being able to somehow prove that each of these three were identical. So we took a look at those pyramids um, and then which face would you consider its base? Is there only one possibility? So for these pyramids, there, there is only one possibility because the base needs to be opposite of that apex. So all those other sides go to the point. So the base would be across from that or opposite of that. So in each of these pyramids, okay, that um, square or rectangular base had to be the pyramid or had to be the base. Um, so which um, faces of the prism are the base? So the prism could be any of them. Because this could be, if this is a base, then this is a base. Remember, the bases in a prism just have to be congruent. You could also have this top panel and this bottom panel. Those are congruent. And you could also be looking at the back panel versus the front panel. So any, any of the rectangles could have been, which really is any of the bases of those pyramids. So these bases each kind of are a different face of the rectangular prism. So do the pyramids marked P1 and P3 have any congruent faces? If so, which ones? Okay, and yes, they do. You'd have to look at those kind of in person to figure out which faces are congruent, but you could set them with each other and see that in P1 and P3, there is a congruent 
face and in P2 and P3, there is a congruent face. Um, so if we take a look at these two pyramids, we know that if they have the same base area, so this base area is five times five or 25, this base area again is five times five or 25, and then they have the same height, seven and seven, then their volumes are gonna be the same. So what would we need in order to verify what we think about the volumes of these two pyramids, or this is kind of what we think about it, is that, the, that they're the same? And kind of thinking about that idea of cross-sectional area versus height, and how would we need to verify? So actually calculating, we would need the volume formula. Okay, so we'd actually need to know a formula that connected the base area and the height to get the volume. We know that for prisms and cylinders, it's area of the base times the height. Okay, what is it when it goes to an apex or when it's a pyramid or a cone is what we would need to know. So in this lesson, we know that pyramids and cones are different from prisms and cylinders because they just have one base and an apex. Okay, so the apex being that point that they go up to. They're like prisms and cylinders in the fact that they can be right or oblique. Okay, so if, they, if the side is perpendicular, if all the sides are perpendicular to that base going from the apex to the center of the base, then you would have a right pyramid, okay? If that is not a 90 degree angle, then you have an oblique. Um, so the relationship between pyramids and prisms, um, we looked at to try to build a formula for volume. So we looked at these kind of three square pyramids and talked about that they created a cube and then in an upcoming lesson, we're actually gonna come up with the formula. Okay, so we hypothesized what the formula was today, but we're gonna come up with what the actual formula is in an upcoming lesson.